Well, good afternoon, evening, morning, whatever time of day it is for you. It's 6.44 p.m. Uh, on uh, Monday afternoon or Monday evening. My time here in, my, here in Florida. And the title that I've selected for the video now is Religion Built on Cos Cognitive Dissonance. <laughs> you see, I actually had... Uh, that's not the right one. That's not the right one either. Where did I have that? Oh, there it is. <laughs> I found it. Perhaps all religion has cognitive dissonant elements, but the New Age religion of modern spirituality, as I see it, takes the prize for creating a belief system that defies logic and justifies ignoring and circumventing the hard realities of the world in which we live. The irony is that I see the people who believe these lies as contributing to maintaining the status quo because silence is consent. They see people like me as resisting the status quo, which in their belief system allows the matrix to continue. What you resist persists is their dogma. Yes, it is confusing for almost, if not everyone. What makes sense to you? <laughs> Recently, one of the strong supporters of Swiss Indo was arrested here in the United States, and his mother began, who lives in Florida, began to write me. He lives in New England, actually. And one of the New Age people in the thread that was being created on this, which was a private thread, by the way, for people that are uh, delegates in Swiss Indo, and I was asking for help uh, on this gentleman's behalf. And one person suggested that do not see the judge as your enemy. Uh, you know, see the judge as, see the good in the judge. Look for the good. And if you treat the judge with respect, the judge will treat you with respect. If you disrespect the judge, the judge will disrespect you. Whatever you put out, whatever energy you put out is what's going to come back to you. That's New Age doctrine. That's what we've been taught. That's the law of attraction according to Abraham, you know, channeled by Esther Hicks. And according to, uh, according to the, the Course in Miracles and other New Age teachings and a lot, a lot of channeled information. As I said, I see that as new age deception. I see that as lies that maintains the status quo because let's put it this way. For a long time, no one knew the government was corrupt. I mean, there were, I shouldn't say no one. There were not a whole lot of people that were aware that the government was doing unlawful things and maybe did not have the best interest of the people at heart. And there weren't a lot of people resisting the government, and those that were were usually imprisoned or killed or in some way silenced. That was the generation not too long ago in my lifetime. That was what was happening. And then people began, I think, a lot with 9-11, even more with the collapse of the what happened in the banking things in 2008. But... Since 2011, a lot of things have been occurring to awaken people to the reality that people that sit at the top of the pyramid and want to control the whole planet uh, have less than benevolent intentions. Uh, in fact, they have malevolent intentions. It's about creating a system of dominance and control and a combat boot on every face to fulfill the prophecy from 1984. This is the kind of people that sit at the helm of the government. And they are masters of deception. Masters of deception. Now, I just, a little while ago, responded to this gentleman who is now out of, out of, out of the uh, city jail in New England, but he has a court appearance that he has to go to. And again, he was advised by one of these new age doctrine advocates to 
Watch his energy. Be very cognizant of the energy because if you are not trusting the judge, the judge won't trust you. And I responded, look, when I, ha when I was arrested, initially I saw the judge as my enemy. And the judge treated me contemptuously. <laughs> I mean, my first appearance before Judge Murphy was horrible. I mean, that man was absolute tyrant. And I responded with a whole bunch of paperwork of uh, pressing counter charges against the sheriff's department and even counter charges against the court itself. And I stood up for the truth. And he said, I'm not going to allow any of your common law documents. I'm going to just ignore them, basically. I'm not going to allow them in my courtroom. And then we began to play a game. And, and if you go back and listen to my videos, you'll, you'll see the game that, that was being played. You'll hear me talk about how I was perceiving things. I actually got to the point, because he was complimenting me and uh, showing friendliness toward me, I actually got to the point where I believed I had won it was on my side. They were going to drop the one charge and if I would t plead to the other one. And I says, well, I'm not going to plead to that one. They ended up pressing the charge that they were going to drop and dropping the charge that they were going to press. But in any case, the judge deceived me. The judge led me to believe. And he even asked me on the final day in court, are you surprised? And yes, I was. I was not only surprised, I was totally unprepared for what had happened, for what happened that day. I was totally unprepared because I fell into the trap of believing that the judge was honest, was on my side, was going to do the right thing. I fell right into the deception, right into it, smack dab into it. And he found me guilty and fined me. I've never paid the fine, and I will never pay the fine uh, because the, re the, the serious charge that they dropped, that they had no witness for, was when the de sheriff deputy assaulted me. It was called resisting arrest without violence, but it was assault and battery on me. He was facilitating what he called an arrest without reading my, my rights, without producing a warrant, without fulfilling his obligation as a law enforcement officer or a peace officer. He was wrong. The judge and the whole court system are wrong. It's all based on fraud. Now, you can believe that or not. But if you investigate at all, that's the inescapable conclusion you will come to. Courts do not obey the law. Police do not obey the law. Judges do not mete out justice. They mete out injustice. They are there to protect the status quo and maintain the extortion racket that they're involved in because it enriches them and gives them a sense of power and a sense of dignity. It's a false sense because they are built, they've built the whole thing on lies and fraud and deception. And anybody that goes in saying, well, they must be okay because God has allowed it, is pulling the wool over their own eyes. That's cognitive dissonance. You think you're going to be treated with justice. Justice is for the corporations. It's not for human beings. They allow a few human beings to have the appearance of justice from time to time to make it look like the system is fair. But 90 some percent of all the cases are decided on behalf of corporations. Now that's probably changing somewhat, but that has been the reality of our world. And it's probably high 90 something percent that are found, the, the rulings are found in favor of corporations. We're not going to change the world by ignoring the realities of the world. We created the world together. Isn't that what I've been saying in so many of my videos and in so many ways? We created the world and we're responsible for it. And until we take responsibility, 
we're not going to change it. Until we take responsibility for our own shadow, our own negative and dark elements, not deny them, not circumvent them, as New Age teaching uh, advocates, and as these teachers that, that talk about, like, I mean, talk about maintaining positive, airy-fairy energy, like that's going to, to change something in the world, and projecting love and light on the darkness is somehow going to make the darkness go away and make the hatred and the violence disappear. It doesn't work that way in our world. Now, you may want to keep believing, and I mean, you can believe whatever you want to believe. But if you honestly think, as if you who are listening, if you honestly think that ignoring the situation in which we find ourselves is somehow going to correct it, I've got oceanfront property to sell you in uh, Montana. <laughs> you know, I'm, of course, that's a joke. I don't have any property to sell anybody. And there is no oceanfront property in Montana. But you believe, you're gullible enough to believe the lie. In psychology, cognitive dissonance is the excessive mental stress and discomfort experienced by an individual who holds two or more contradictory beliefs ideas or values at the same time. Now you're believing that everything is good, but your experience is telling you there's a lot of things that aren't very good. There's a lot of people that aren't doing the, the nice things. And you can have nice positive energy, but your experience is going to cause dissonance be because your experience is going to be different than what your belief system is. You're believing one thing, but you're experiencing something else. And that's where the real cognitive dissonance comes from. And you don't want to believe it. You don't want to believe it's true. Now, I, let me see if I still have that quote somewhere. Um, all right, here it is. It's, um, there are two ways to be fooled. One is to believe what is not true. The other is to refuse to accept what is true. That's uh, Soren Kierkegaard. Uh, an amazing theologian and philosopher uh, from a couple of centuries or so ago, I believe. I can't remember exactly the time frame, but I, I'm thinking it was like the 17 or 1800s, maybe. I'm guessing because I re don't remember. Uh, but in any case, it's a wonderful quote. And New Age theology, New Age indoctrination, to me, is a ploy to get people not to take action to actually make the changes that they're able to make in their own personal lives and in the culture and the society of the world in which we live. And they refuse to accept the obvious truth. I mean the obvious truth that our governments are not on our side, that, that our mainstream media does not tell us the truth. More and more people are awake to that fact. More and more people realize that that is the truth. But there are still some people that want to put their head in the sand and cover their eyes, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil, and it's not evil when it's the truth. But you don't want to believe it's the truth. You don't want to believe that demons have run amok on our planet and that psychopaths have risen to the pinnacles of power, controlling as far as they could get away with it everything and everyone. That's their mission, to create a new world order of total domination and total slavery. Total control over every segment of life and every segment of the population. You don't want to believe that? Fine. But not believing it isn't going to change it. Thinking nice thoughts about it isn't going to change it. Believing that everything that's, that happens it must be God's will because that's what, what's happening, that's not going to change anything. In fact, it, to me, from my perspective, it's only going to add fuel to the fire. It's only making it easier for them to come closer to achieving their goal of total world domination. Now, I don't believe that's going to happen because I do believe more and more people are shifting to see things like, like I'm beginning to see things. Was I ever entrapped in the New Age dogma? Of course I was. I was spoon-fed the New Thought doctrines for a long time, and a lot of them make sense. A lot of them seem to make sense till you examine it more closely. And I've never been one. I've never been one 
that's been an advocate of avoiding the shadow or avoiding the negative. In fact, I've long, long been a proponent of embracing the darkness, of embracing the shadow, of embracing the paradoxes, so that you don't have cognitive dissonance. You embrace them both as having a value and you learn wisdom from looking at both, both polarities. And you don't look at either polarity as something that needs to be denied or gotten rid of or separated from. And you don't call one of them, you don't call one of them an illusion and one of them real. They are both real and illusions at the same time. Ah, the paradox. Because everything can be false or true depending on how you hold the information. Now, I know that doesn't make sense and it may not make sense to a lot of people, but it's what I've learned. I hold the information, for example, that the courts are criminal institutions committing an extortion racket and involved in a human slave trade. I know that. But when I go into the courts, when I deal with people in the courts or in police stations with police or whatever, I do my best to be courteous, to be kind, to recognize that they are also human beings, but to recognize that they have a vested interest that is not upright and benevolent. It's not kind and it's not good. Even if they may put a mask on, and make it appear that way, it's not that way. So we need to develop discernment and wisdom in order for us to see through the facade that's presented in the matrix of people supposedly acting as if they are respectable, intelligent, uh, kind human beings. They are not. As long as they are invested in a criminal enterprise, as long as they are invested in a fraudulent uh, endeavor, they cannot, they cannot be benevolent. Even though there might be benevolence deep down inside, somewhere under the surface, that's not the mode in which they operate. And we need to look at this and we need to look at it honestly, because we're not going to change the world by ignoring it and embracing some of these new age dogmas that teach us that it's okay to just ignore what we don't like. Don't you know, only focus on what makes you feel good. Don't ever pay attention to what makes you feel bad. This is all New Age bullshit, and that's how I'm going to label it. You can make up your own mind what you want to do, but I would be very wary of adopting some of these ideas that allow you to stay in a comfort zone that creates, that will ultimately create for you cognitive dissonance, because that's not the way the world is working yet. We want to build a world that works that way, but it's not working that way yet. Embrace that, accept it. If you don't want to accept it, do your own thing. You're going to anyway. Thank you for listening. Namaste.